Hey guys, hello. Uh, time for another lecture. And once again, sorry for my rough voice. Uh, lots of my students in the past had uh, problems against the bishop before French. It's called whenever variation. It's not easy at all to face it from my own experience. And I can uh, tell you that. And it's quite annoying because black usually goes with bishop before he wants to take on c3 doubling these pawns at the same time he's threatening on e4 the main line with e5 is just a little bit of an unusual uh, type of the game where you just have to learn how to play with uh, um, a pawn chain and that's why in the practice and turns out to be uh, French positions turns out to be very difficult for white players and because of that I just decided to show you my specialty that I don't only really use in blitz games but I used to play them in some rapid games even in two tournament games a very interesting one I won most of my games with it and uh, my students who I taught to play this, they had lots of fun with it. So let's get started. It's queen d3 fourth move. And uh, the starting moves are e4, e6, French defense, d4, d5. Of course, you should be um, going for the center. And you play knight c3. Knight c3 is one of four uh, main moves there. You have exchanged variation. You have advanced variation, exchange variation, it takes d5, advanced variation, e5, and you have tarash variation with knight e2. Whenever I teach my students who are willing to play open and pretty sharp games, I teach them to play knight c3. So, uh, apart from knight c3 and knight f6, uh, which is Steinitz variation, you have bishop b4, and bishop b4 statistically is a little bit more common in practice than knight f6. So when they play bishop b4, uh, in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to play queen to d3. So the point of this move is to defend on e4. And that's the main line when they take on e4 and get a tempo with queen e4, knight f6. But before that, let's go to the sidelines. Uh, I'll begin this lecture uh, with a blitz game of mine played in Lee Chess a year ago against an IM. Don't know his name. You can find it there on the site. The guy played b6. Uh, just like all other French guys, wanted to solve the problem of the light square bishop with the bishop a6 well believe it or not it doesn't work against queen b3 so in fifth move queen b5 check i won the game and the guy resigned a very funny one because i wish uh, the same thing to happen to you as well and to win your game in five moves so uh, that traditional b6 approach with uh, solving the problem of the light square bishop with the bishop a6 here doesn't seem to be working Another thing with the bishop c3, where they just want to uh, break your uh, pawn structure, also doesn't seem to be working. So now you're wondering, can we take by queen? Yes, we can. And of course, we can take by queen, d takes c4, and go for either f3 and open up the game with a bishop pair, which would be fine. Even some uh, crazy things with the d5 could be interesting, but I don't like because of knight f6. So uh, in my opinion, way better is to take by pawn. We better is to take by pawn while, while you're going to slide your queen onto the g3 and on the king side, uh, move your light square bishop on d3 and play with the bishop pair where your dark square bishop controls this diagonal or it goes on a3. A very nice one and I like this one a lot. For example, a couple of my games, my opponents went for this and when they play like knight f65 of course once again you play with a pawn chain but in different uh, circumstances uh, uh, in comparison to the main line why because of knight e4 you just go with f3 and they don't have uh, actually sorry you don't go f3 because they go with a famous chess.com trick queen h4 and knight g3 so this is why you just have to go with the knight e2 to prevent uh, simply uh, queen h4 and not just that you just want to go with f3 and on ag5 to trap the piece with h4 for example i won a few games of course 
if you play against anyone a little bit better he's going to be able to recognize that and they usually recognize this by playing h6 you play f3 knight g5 h4 and they gotta hide this knight on h7 i mean it's terrible knight and other guys play f6 you still play f3 here you play h4 you can play like this play e takes f6 play f4 uh or you don't even have to play like this uh, but an f6 to play uh, this position and here you can just decide whether you want to take on f6 immediately play bishop f4 do something else and you just have a good game apart from bishop c3 they can go with c5 that's a very known and uh, i'd say famous french approach hey yes sorry i apologize if knight f6 e5 and they don't go knight e4 but they go knight e7 uh, you just go with my uh, for example you can go queen g3 which is a nice tricky move because if you play castles bishop h6 wins the exchange uh, if g6 you just say hey buddy sorry but this time i'm going to create lots of weaknesses on the dark squares queen is off so you gotta play f6 and now i play knight f3 bishop d3 and uh, i got an upper hand in this position and finally if king f8 your king is weak i just developed knight f3 bishop d3 and i have a nice game well you gotta suffer because of this king so that queen on g3 is good another option is play bishop a3 and uh, bring that bishop here don't give them to castle and have a nice game okay they can solve this problem with c5 and queen a5 so that's why if you ask me which one do i prefer i definitely prefer queen on g3 creating weaknesses provoking them to play king f8 because castle and g6 are just bad so when they play like king f8 for the rest of the game we should be very happy with bishop d3 knight f3 don't play f4 don't play f4 because you gotta keep this bishop on diagonal being open or in some positions it may go with the tempo but be very careful of c5 followed by queen a5 ideas now let's go to c5 if c5 happens you just have to take on d5 because they just have like a pretty nice pressure against our center and that's why we have to react with e takes d5 and take on c5 they can never play any d4 don't worry about that because you you solve that problem with uh, a3 and if they can in, in case they play bishop a5 you play this so when they take like this you take on a5 i won't few games with it if bishop c5 you just go with tempo play queen g3 very uh, likable move so if g6 you go with knight f3 if king f8 you once again go with knight f3 they have problems with the broken pawn structure three pawn islands a uh, king that is exposed on f8 so it's a good thing for us if d takes c5 and instead of a d4 they play more logical 97 it's better approach then you just have to go with the bishop g5 to prevent and to fight against bishop on f5 if f6 they created lots of weaknesses on the light squares and you should be happy uh, with this fact and then you just bring your bishop back but now they have lots of problems with three pawn islands on bishop g5 castles you play long castles if bishop f5 you can always take play like this and now they're suffering because you're up upon your threat 97 to win on the spot so they're just lost N not lost but way worse also you threat 97 here with another trick uh, that's why after long castles they gotta go f6 bishop f4 bishop f5 and here you go queen f3 queen keeps an eye on the knight on c3 threatens the pawn on d5 you have better development everything in your game looks really really good um, apart from all these moves uh, let's go now to the main approaches so we've seen all these sidelines and we simply can make a very brief conclusion and like other whenever positions where all these side reactions such as c5 bishop c3 b6 could be you know like playable here that's not a case against queen d3 so what happens against knight c6 they want to take on e4 and take on d4 in my opinion you should be going with e5 this way you just close the knight on c6 make it kind of inactive and they don't have a typical break in the french with c5 related so if they try uh, once again in a typical french way to break with f6 in my opinion you should go with a3 so if they take you take by queen and that queen uh defends even e5 pawn with the pawn with the bishop here and with a fairly strong center playing against the passed pawn on d5 i believe this could be a pretty fine game for white uh, apart from that they can go bishop e7 going back with the bishop and keeping uh, 
at that bishop you go knight f3 and when they take you play like this uh, their main problem is the knight on g8 as well as short castle afterwards like you know what uh, consequently that means that a king on e8 is also a bad piece another thing is 97 that's what i used to play when i played french uh whenever aligned with the black pieces and here andrakin played against hui fan a3 uh, this one you take uh, b takes and you just play a normal things uh, there are like so many options after this they can go b6 in which case you slide your queen onto the third rank with this and after castles you can play bishop f4 you can play bishop d3 what Andrakin played and after this he just went for the knight f3 any bishop d3 c takes d3 now you have the control of the center and you should be nice he beat who you found like this finally if uh by the way if after b takes c3 they just go with castle uh, you shouldn't panic this is another interesting type of uh, position in my opinion here you have to go with e5 and you play with the bishop pair yes you do play with a pawn chain uh, but you're just going to have this queen i like this specialty going with the queen on h3 and fighting for bishop d3 so you can never go with f5 because i'm gonna be going with some g4 tricks well both of my bishops uh, this one on d3 and another one on c c1 they just do a fairly good job and now when we saw all these options uh, i just have to show you two main lines the main line is knight f6 i mean uh, second most common variation against this one you play e5 in e94 remember don't ever play f3 because of queen h4 g3 knight g3 and always go first knight g2 you keep the flexible and a healthy pawn structure and you want to kick this knight away with f3 followed by h4 to win the knight uh, if they go uh, if it go uh, if it goes on g5 if it takes on c3 you will be taking knight takes c3 and keep the healthy pawn structure and have the bishop here advantage so they always have to go on e5 knight after d7 and here this is the point of this queen on d3 it goes straight away onto the king side threatens the pawn on g7 and you just go with the attack like this a very uh, nice line well like this one uh, they have lots of problems once again they can go short castle because of famous trick uh, once again on g6 you have a very sweet approach with a3 and if they take you just take by queen and have a healthy pawn structure unlike all those whenever classic positions where you take by pawn you keep the healthy pawn structure if they go back you just say okay man it's not a problem but i can stop your castle with this beautiful bishop on h6 but i can also go with h4 uh, controlling the dark squares and any c5 now we simply take we uh, don't keep the pawn chain but uh, it's of extreme importance to keep the most important piece in these positions and that's the pawn on e5 it's a golden uh, golden pawn in this type of games and finally i'm just showing you what happens if d takes c4 if d takes c4 and that's absolutely the most common thing you're gonna face that and you know that i like this percentages uh online uh online i get this in 75 percent of the games after a queen to d3 so you gotta take by queen and everybody are so happy to do this knight of six with tempo here you just have this very uh, adorable queen h4 thing because it's aimed against short castle so if they ever go short castle you don't play uh, bishop g5 because bishop g5 can be met by h6 and now you you don't have second h6 because there is no bishop on d3 but you first play knight f3 what's the point of this you overprotect d4 and when they play for example knight c6 you go first with the bishop d3 why i want to go with bishop g5 going after the h7 one if you play h6 i'll sack on h6 play queen h6 and you can't stop my knight g5 thing i won so many games with a knight d4 castle long they take on f3 and then i have checkmate on the g file if they don't do it i threatening knight takes d4 and discovery bishop h7 winning the queen those who play rookie eight to do bishop of eight sorry buddy but you're one move late i'm now threatening bishop h7 so when they go like this it's mate and if king h8 knight f7 uh, just like you see that's why majority of these guys play c5 if knight c6 you always play knight f3 and thank your opponent so much because 
he gave you an important tempo. A couple of guys tried to solve this problem against me by playing knight e5. They realize how annoying this queen on h4 is. Then you can take on d8 and play bishop d2. For example, knight e8, bishop d2, bishop c3, b takes c3. It's a very nice position because we just have the bishop pair advantage. And those who tried to solve this problem of the light square bishop with b6 and bishop b7, not a big deal um, uh, and not a big problem for us. We, we can go with knight e5, and when they play bishop b7, stopping bishop b5 threats and so on, you go, uh, you go for two important things. You go a4, a5, uh, getting rid of uh, this pawn on a4 because it's a pawn island, and playing f3, shutting off uh, the activity of the light square bishop and making it kind of useless. At some point, you can even consider some c4 kicking the knight away from d5. And those who play c5, that's the main move, and that's the main line, you just take here, uh, you threaten to take the bishop, to check it out, they gotta take on c3, and they just go for broken pawn structure. A very important rule about these positions, you don't care about the broken pawns. No, that's not, a, that's not your uh, problem, and we just go for uh, aggressive dynamic approach, Again, we don't care about these pawns and we don't care about a broken pawn structure. So when they play queen a5, you just face it with queen b4. That's the thing. That's the thing and that's a very important line. They go uh, knight c6. You can take, gain the tempo because knight on a5 has to go back on c6. Or you can play, for example, bishop b5. Uh, in the case of uh, castles, you just go with knight f3. And I especially like this bishop a3 idea because I keep threatening very nasty c6 things and that gives me a time to solve my problems. I also like to play bishop a3, what uh, I believe who you funded against somebody. And after queen c7, queen g3. A very nice uh, variation because she managed to uh, keep uh, the pawn up. She has the bishop pair, open h file and uh, almost winning a queenless middle game. And finally, if knight bd7, they just want to get the pawn back, you should go with this bishop a3 favorite move of mine. It stops and prevents castle because of c6. If queen e7, who's crazy to go under the x-rays, you just go knight f knight here, this one. Uh, for example, I won a game like this. They gave me check. They were so happy to get rid of it, and I went here. And now I'm threatening queen, rook b1, and so on. My opponent went for queen c3, and I had this fantastic trick, threatening on g7 and bishop b5 discovery on the queen on c3. So I just remember that was a nice one. Of course that I expect um, of most of your opponents to go with a queen a5, but now it's a stupid position for them. Why? Because when I play queen b4, trying to fix my pawn structure with a bishop pair and being up a pawn, they don't have the knight that can go on c6 and harass the queen on b4. So they gotta go queen c7, and now you say, thank you, buddy. Now I have c6, I'm threatening mate here, and uh, when they play like knight e5 to stop that mate, you take bishop b5, play long castles, and say goodbye, baby, see you next time. Hope that you enjoy this fourth move, queen d3 against the winner of the French, and just like your coach, you might have lots of good results with it in the future. Thanks, and see you next time.